I'm filming from a friend's house here in LA, so I'm sorry about the sound. I forgot my microphone. Now, I have removed my friend's family photo from the background, so that um, just in case uh, he doesn't, doesn't want that there. But guys, it's 12 a.m. here in California in a little, a little town called Pismo Beach, which is an amazing part of the world. You've got, to, you've got to come and visit this area. It's absolutely spectacular. And we've just seen some news that no one's really talking about. And I'm shocked by this. I can't understand why no one's, no one's talking about this news because it's the biggest news of probably the last two years for Tesla. Maybe for the entire automotive industry for the last two years, potentially. If you haven't heard this, I know many haven't. Many of you have not heard this news. Now, I would have reported on this much sooner, but I haven't been up to have been traveling. But you need to know this stuff. Tesla has four new batteries. Four new batteries it's working on. Chinese suppliers have confirmed the batteries are well, four different chemistries. I'm going to explain to you everything I know about this and kind of use a bit of conjecture or, you know, logical guesswork to kind of explain what exactly is going to happen with these four different batteries, what Tesla's plan actually is. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking coming to you from California. Great to have you with us. Just drove the Cybertruck today for self-driving. was fantastic. Drove for, I don't know, more than 20 miles without touching anything. I mean, I did try to drive it a bit, but honestly, it drives better than me. Unquestionably, I, I think I'm actually a decent driver. Well, I thought I was, but um, Tesla's for self-driving is much is a much better driver than, than I am. It's much smoother. It's like... Anyway, four batteries. Okay, Tesla suppliers in China are saying that Tesla is working on four different batteries. Now, why Tesla suppliers in China are saying this? Well, Tesla has to get some of the uh, production, the parts from suppliers in China. So even though Tesla will be manufacturing these batteries in the United States, uh, Tesla does still have suppliers. It still needs things like, um, well, where's it going to get the chemistry, the stuff for its lithium-ion phosphate batteries, uh, anodes, cathodes, you know, those sorts of things. Well, apparently suppliers, uh, insiders from China have said that there's four new chemistries coming out. There is some pretty st strong information suggesting that the base model 4680 battery will actually be an LFP chemistry, lithium iron phosphate. Now, I know I don't, sorry, Americans don't use the word iron correctly. Apparently, I need to change my accent, I've been told. <laughs> I got a couple of emails over the last few months. You need to change the way you speak because... Um, you don't sound American, I've been told. So sorry, Americans, um, can't help that. That's just too bad. Lithium ion phosphate batteries, we know that um, Tesla stopped using those in the Model 3 in the United States within the last week. It was using them in the base Model 3, the base version and the base model in the Model Y. It still uses them in China and Germany for the base models, for the standard range models, but not in the US anymore. The reason is because those batteries, because the cells are manufactured by Cadel, obviously the entire package is made by Tesla, but the cells themselves are made by Cadel in China. They don't, the cars don't qualify for the $7,500 tax credit. So Tesla scrapped that model. Now the Model 3, the cheapest version, costs, uh, I believe it's 45,000 US dollars. And that is, that's now the long range version. It's the long range rear wheel drive. It has 373 miles of EPA range. That's about 420 miles of WLTP range. It's the longest range, you know, Tesla Model 3 or Model Y you can purchase. Incredibly good value now. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular value for the money you're getting. It does now qualify for EP incentives because it now uses Tesla's I believe 2170 Panasonic cells. So Tesla have scrapped those LFP batteries because they don't qualify. But if Tesla makes the 4680 battery um, lithium ion phosphate, then it will qualify and it will be cheaper to manufacture than Tesla's NCM chemistry 4680 battery cell. Now, Tesla's master plan exactly specified that the base model Cybertruck would use lithium ion phosphate batteries and be the, the number one seller. It would be the, basically take up the large majority of orders. You're looking at a Cybertruck costing maybe potentially $60,000, cheaper battery pack using lithium ion phosphate batteries. That appears to be the plan for Tesla. 
Now, it's believed all four battery chemistries, I'll get to the other ones in a second, will use Tesla's dry cathode process for both the positive and the negative electrodes that will also reduce cost. So imagine Tesla's mass manufacturing for all these 4680 cells using dry electrode, dry electrodes and dry cathodes. Production should be pretty cheap and, and very, very fast and efficient. That's what Tesla's plan is anyway. And obviously that was part of their master plan. Now we know that Tesla has already begun manufacturing uh, the 4680 cell using dry cathodes. Uh, and that means that Tesla has finally figured out the process, that process which has been going on for years now, extremely challenging, extremely difficult, but they figured it out. And that means they should be able to bring the price down for the 4680 battery cell, but that is not an LFP cell. So LFP cells are not here yet. Will they be coming in the future? I think they will because Tesla to mass manufacture the Cybertruck and to produce a global Cybertruck, which is they, they aim to do this. I know a lot of the media are telling you this is not happening, but I believe it 100% is. Tesla don't just give, they're not just give away having hundreds of thousands of orders that are not from the United States, not from North America. They've got hundreds of thousands outside of North America. That's actually a fact. I'm making that up. So they're not gonna just get rid of those. The Cybertruck will be produced for a, a, a global market and it'll have, I believe, LFP 4680 battery cells using dry electrodes, dry cathodes, and that will be the solution. Now, the four different batteries, these are what they're called. NC05, that's the base model, that's LFP, NC20, and then there's the NC30, and then there's the NC50. Now, each of them are intended for different purposes, but basically NC05, NC20, NC30, and NC50, they're all ref really some kind of an opaque reference to battery energy density. So the NC05 has the lowest energy density, therefore LFP. The NC20, I believe, has higher energy density. It will be an NMC battery, NC30, NMC, NC50 might be some sort of maybe NMC, maybe manganese focused battery, but it will also use silicon. I'll get to that in a second. The NC05 battery will be the mass production battery that we know that for certain. And we also know that Tesla plans on using those batteries in base model versions of their cars. Base model version of the Cybertruck will get the LFP battery. Base model version of the Model Y, base model version of the Model 3, they'll all get this cheaper 4680 LFP battery. Now, we don't know exactly what the next version, the second version up is. Uh, no one has revealed that information yet. I'm sure we'll find out over the next six months. But the NC30 and the NC50 will both use silicon carbon in the anodes, specifically silicon. That's really the game changer here. Silicon is difficult material to work with. Tesla have been working on silicon, using that uh, using that in their batteries for many years now. This is not some new thing. They've been doing this for, I believe, about six or seven years. Why is it taking so long? Well, because using silicon, it enables you to use more lithium. It enables you to make a high energy density battery. Uh, in fact, potentially much higher energy density possibly up to 400 watt hours per kilogram but there is of course there's been a big problem with that so for those of you who are well known you understand this whole battery chemistry thing the big problem with silicon is well it's not energy density it's longevity the batteries uh they, they have problems when this the battery basically when the batteries have been hitting 500 thousand even 2000 cycles uh, the energy density starts to drop, the batteries degrade, and unfortunately, there's issues. There's been issues with all manufacturers, not just Tesla, basically everyone working on using silicon in lithium batteries has faced these same challenges. But apparently, uh, it's possible that Tesla has solved those challenges. Now, if they have, this would give Tesla a significant advantage versus their rivals. And I think this is something we should not overlook. Apparently, the NC30, so the second highest chemistry battery, would be used for vehicles such as the Cybertruck, a longer range version of the Cybertruck, potentially 400 plus miles, and uh, apparently an all electric sedan. So there'll be a Model 3, maybe a Model S, long, super, super long range versions. Now, the NC50 is going to be used for vehicles that are focused on performance. The next generation Tesla Roadster, the Tesla Cyber Beast, the Cybertruck Cyber Beast. Um, possibly Model X Plaid, Model S Plaid, 
those vehicles will apparently get the NC50 battery, which is the silicon battery, the much higher energy density. I would estimate probably an energy density of around 350 watt hours per kilogram. Based on all the information that I've read and put together, that would be my estimate. Now, keep in mind that there is also talk Tesla have been working together with Cadle, the biggest battery manufacturer in the world, to actually help them produce these batteries potentially, and they're working together to get this off the ground. Obviously, Cadle have the ability, they have the machinery, they have the expertise. Now, it's true, Cadle don't make 4680 battery cells. That doesn't mean they can't help Tesla with this project. But also keep in mind, you've also got Tesla's, one of their big battery partners is Panasonic. They also work with LG Chem. They also work with Samsung. I mean, there's a whole bunch of manufacturers here that Tesla work with, and all of them want to be in, they, all of them want to be supplying Tesla. They think that their, Tesla is crucial to their companies. So I believe Tesla are doing this in conjunction with other companies. And this rumor, whilst it might sound like rumors, I don't think it is because if you listen to what Panasonic have just said, I just did a video on this, I believe it was a week or two ago, Panasonic's batteries, they're saying energy density will improve drastically. They've given some like numbers that I thought were crazy sounding, but now when you actually start to put the pieces together and have a look at what Tesla is, these four different battery types and what Panasonic's saying, and you actually figure out what they're both doing potentially together, you can see this could be game changing. This could mean EVs with a range of 600 plus miles. I think it's very likely, and this will happen over the next couple of years, all these four batteries won't come out at once. Obviously, they'll be staggered. Tesla will be working on probably the cheapest version first, potentially. But also keep in mind, Tesla want to get that Tesla Roadster out. What battery cells were the roads to use? Well, this report saying NC50 cells with silicon. If that happens, the Tesla Roadster could end up having more than 600 miles of range, which is what Elon Musk claimed it would have many years ago.